Now I'm going to show you how you can use really this trivi to then just fix as many vulnerabilities as possible. So this is how you eliminate vulnerabilities and security issues further and further on as you go along building your application stack. When you use Trivi, the all-in-one cloud native security scanner, one of the scan targets, so meaning the things that you can scan are container images. Basically, you can scan your container images or your source code for vulnerabilities. Here's what such a scan would look like if I scan this Python Alpine container image. Here's the information I'm provided with, within a table format, which is the default format in Trivi. Um, basically tells me the library that's installed, the vulnerability that's found in that library, the severity, whether there's a fix available or not. In this case, it's fixed. That's the status of the vulnerability. The installed version that has the vulnerability. And then here's the fixed version that I should update to as a minimum to have, to not have that vulnerability anymore. So I get lots of questions on where does this vulnerability come from? How is the CVE classified? Why is it classified like that? So I actually wrote a blog post on the life cycle of a vulnerability and you can find that below in the description of this video. However, this is not exactly what this video is gonna be about. This video is about how you can use Security Scanner as a non-security expert and how I use Trivi a lot of the time for example, demo projects in my source code and to enhance, to improve my container images. So that's what this video is about, to quickly show you how can you use Trivi without having a clue about CVEs. Because ultimately you don't really want to go through hundreds of vulnerabilities. We have a whole section here in the documentation that shows you just how you can filter vulnerabilities, the output, the scan output, by the status of the vulnerability, whether it has a fix or not, for example, the severity, is it a critical vulnerability? By the vulnerability and security issue ID, you can also ignore specific vulnerabilities and other security issues, for example, for misconfiguration secrets licenses and much, much more. But that's not what this video is about. If that's what you're interested in, there's another video link below in the description. Now, I'm going to show you how you can use really this trivi to then just fix as many vulnerabilities as possible in your source code, in your container images, without really caring about the scan result. Because the majority of people probably who should use security scanners are not security folks and don't really care about the details of the security vulnerability of the issues. They just want to make the application more secure. And I think that's a really noble goal and we should support that without requiring people to understand the details. We want you to not feel stupid using a security scanner without having to understand the details of security scanning, if that makes sense. Now, I really hope that does make sense. If it doesn't, please comment your questions below in the comment section. Okay, so I have here my example application. It's just a basic Node.js TypeScript JavaScript application. And within here, I have a Docker file. And I use this Docker file to create a container image of my application. Now, what you can do if you have Trivi installed, and there are lots and lots of different options for installing Trivi, also linked below in the description. What you can do, you can scan your source file. And that's done with the Trivi file system command. And I just can scan my local file system for vulnerabilities. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I have here two vulnerabilities that have already a fix available. So here's the installed version and here's the fixed version that has the fix available. So after I've scanned my local source code, I can go ahead and I can fix it, fix the issues here that are found in my package log JSON file uh, from my package manager from NPM and go ahead and fix them. Now Trivi has lots and lots of different integrations with different programming languages that you can use instead if you're not a JavaScript fan. I'm not a JavaScript fan. I just have here this example repository because it's great for examples. Now you can find my example repository right here on my Cloud Native Security GitHub organization and it's just called website. What you can also do is manually go, for example, into my package log.json file and actually update the vulnerability 
from 1.0.2 to 2.0.1. Now let's rescan. Ta-da, we fixed one of our vulnerabilities. So luckily, Trivi has an option called dash dash dependency tree. We are gonna add that to our Trivi file system command, dash dash dependency tree, let's see. So from here, we go back and check which version we have installed. Uh, React scripts, we have version 5.0.1 installed. Now, where is it again? Just showed me where this comes from. Ah, there it was. Okay, so <laughs> basically uh, VS Code will give me the link to this package, to this library that I'm using here where it's installed. So here's ultimately the library. It's by Facebook. And this is what I'm using to create a one click kind of React application, how I bootstrap this. Now, if I head over to here, the releases, I can see that the latest version is the version that I'm using that I've installed. So I don't know what kind of updates I can run at the moment. It tells me by Trivi that here's a fixed version, but the thing is, in this case, this is a special scenario because as you could see before, I could fix the vulnerability, right? I could go ahead and fix the vulnerability. Now in this case, I am running the latest version of the vulnerability that's or like, of the library. I'm using the latest version of the library that has this package, the post CSS package inside. So basically, um, the maintainers of React scripts, basically Facebook maintainers, they need to make a decision, are they gonna fix this vulnerability in the next version, yes or no? That's on them, that's their decision to make. I'm using the latest version of the library that has this vulnerability. Now in this case, I'm heavily dependent on these React scripts. Um, library, right, from Facebook that I'm using. So I can't really do anything about it in this case. I will just have to add that to a Trivi ignore file, basically. So since I looked into the vulnerability, I've created now a Trivi.Trivi ignore file and I've added here the CVE of the vulnerability, the ID. Now I don't know the details of the vulnerability. I've just made a decision I'm going to edit to my Trivi ignore list and then when I rerun the scan Trivi file system with the dependency tree I can see that I don't have any more vulnerabilities identified within my installed packages. Now what I can do next just to be sure is I can look for the CVE and in this case I find an issue related to the CVE um, which details that there needs to be a bump in that post, post CSS dependency. Here somebody said that they use their package JSON to overwrite basically the thing that has the vulnerability inside. Uh, since it hasn't been it hasn't been uh, patched since November. So what I could do is also include overwrites within my package JSON. So I'm basically overwriting the dependency with the fixed version. Um, so here they detail, they basically the people tell me what I can do about the vulnerability since uh, the maintainers of Create React that I, in this case, haven't patched it yet. Okay, so I've included the overrides here in my package.json file as they detailed with the new version of post CSS 8.4.31. I can go back to my file system and, well, first of all, exclude it from my ignore file. So that option we don't need at the moment anymore. To save this. And then we can go ahead and we can rescan our file system. Make sure is it still gonna be included? Yes, right now it is included. Um, because I haven't run another npm install. So I have to update the vulnerability through the overrides here. So now it found actually zero vulnerabilities. That's exciting. <laughs> First time um, using an NPM project with zero vulnerabilities. Anyway, now I can run the Trivi file system dependency tree command again. And 
here we go. We fixed, we patched all of the vulnerabilities that we had in this project. Now, obviously this were just two vulnerabilities, but this is kind of the process you would go to, through, right? So I could have decided, okay, I'm not gonna do the overrides here of the specific package that's used within my React script somewhere here. Um, but instead just ignored as part of my security scanning. Now Trivi also allows you to put with a Trivi ignore.yaml manifest to put like a timeline on until when you want to ignore the vulnerability. Once the timeline is passed, Trivi will show the vulnerability again. So now I have patched all of the vulnerabilities within my file system. Now I would go ahead and package this application into a container image. So we do that right now. Okay, this was great demonstration how we can actually go ahead and also fix inside of our code all vulnerabilities, which is not always the best option apparently. So I tried to <laughs> tried to use the container image. However, it wouldn't install, it wouldn't run npm install if I'm using the fixed version, the fixed install of env check. So I have to do a similar workaround to basically overwrite and check within React scripts that also contains this vulnerability. We saw this before, this person was smart, they also overrated the env check vulnerability. So we're gonna copy paste this, right? Copy from smart people, there's nothing wrong with that. And highly appreciate all of the effort that other people put into providing content that can be copied actually. So, especially if you give people credit. So you shout out to Drawbar. Whoever Drawbar is, you are great. <laughs> I hope this person appreciates it. You never know. Okay, so now we have scanned our file system, our source code for vulnerabilities, and we have patched them. Next, we want to package our container image. So here I have my Docker file, nice Docker file, two stage built. So we have here the first stage, and then we have the second stage built. So you can go ahead and you can scan your Docker file for misconfigurations. So you can say trivi config or trivi file system, and then scanners misconf for the misconfiguration scanner and we pass in the docker file that we have we're going to scan it for misconfigurations so basically anything that's misconfigured will show up here so you should set a user of your docker file of your container image otherwise by default it will run as root which is not ideal now you can clean it up you can fix it if you want to in this case i'm not really too bothered right <laughs> you should fix it uh i'm not too bothered in this case but um, now what you want to do is you package your application. So I've already packaged it. So I have a container image that I want to scan for vulnerabilities. So trivi image, my container image and it's CNS website and it's version 0.2.1. So I'm going to scan it for vulnerabilities and that's based on the current container image. As you can see, there are two medium vulnerabilities, well, multiple vulnerabilities, but they're related to two libraries. They are all medium vulnerabilities. Where do they come from? So this container image, CNS website 0.2.1, actually uses Alpine 3.17.6. So basically here it uses 3.17.6, which is not ideal because even though it's a multi-stage build, those vulnerabilities end up in my final container image. They have nothing to do with my con with my application itself. They have everything to do with my base container image that I'm using. So your base container image might be an Alpine image, so a smaller version of another image. So for example, of the Node image, you might be using the Alpine version, or you might be using just Alpine or Ubuntu or another container image, another operating system as your base image that you want to package your application on or within. Um, and in this case, the image that it's ultimately using under the hood has these two vulnerabilities. So how do I fix them? I ultimately have to update my base container image. In this case, I can update it to 3.19 if I want to do that. So I've already done that and I've repackaged my application. So now if I scan 0. 
2.2, if I go ahead and do that, it will scan my new container image that uses 3.17.7 under the hood. And as you can see, it has no vulnerabilities. So this is how you eliminate vulnerabilities and security issues further and further on as you go along building your application stack. So now I can go ahead and I use this container image that has zero vulnerabilities, that has a file system with zero vulnerabilities. Woo, the ideal, the dream of every security person. <laughs> um, and I can use it in my deployment. So I can update my deployment, in this case, for example, my YAML manifest for Kubernetes and run it in my Kubernetes cluster with no concerns whatsoever. Now, but ultimately, once I have done that, I'm going into the realm of misconfigurations. Misconfiguration is if I have anything misconfigured within my configuration file. And that might be Kubernetes resource, it might be my Docker file, as I shown you, that might be my Terraform uh, deployment, that might be any configuration file that I'm ultimately using. Now that's a complete different topic. I highly suggest you to check out the Aqua Security open source. Now, if you're curious about other types of security scanning, such as misconfiguration scanning or secret scanning or license scanning, check out the videos that we have on the Acra Security open source channel. Also, all of the resources used are linked below in the description of this video.